Alrighty then, welcome back. It is a mentorship Monday on a Tuesday. Wasn't able to get with you guys last night. We're gonna make up for it here today. I'm gonna answer every single question over there in the ask questions section. So let's get straight to it here tonight. Everybody's time is valuable. So let's go right now. Uh, don't forget, trading is risky. Good make sure it's put up our number. disclaimers of all that kind of stuff. Everything here is for education and entertainment purposes only. But let's talk about strategies. If you're trading and you wanna hear how I approach things, that's what we're here for. And wow, what another stellar day. Man, um, so I've been a little bit quiet, but bro, these markets have been awesome. I mean, haven't they? It's just been, it's been banger after banger. Now there was one day in there that I wanna talk about um, where our system specifically told you don't trade those markets. Even right now, after hours, the, the speed is high. We No surprise, right? Today is a major earnings report today. Over 400 companies are reporting after hours. Um, but you guys know what those blue Xs mean. If you don't, again, make sure you go into our psychology module video. Very important this to understand the the what the Xs mean on your charts. Again, you can change those background colors, etc. There are other ways to do it. If you want the text, you hit the text. It says, do not trade. Or if you want the overlay, that is the O in the center of the psychology module. As we go through all these things here tonight, I'm going to talk about the small things, the big things, everything in between. So let's cover it. Um, let's see. Somebody just. Oh, thank you, BBQ. Market replay as soon as I get home. Awesome missile. Great idea. I've seen, been seeing you guys absolutely crushing it in the room. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, everybody give us a shout out in the chat. Let's get a little spam in the chat there going. Maybe if you want to say something silly like, I don't know, where you're from, post that in the chat and let's let people know that we are out here. Let's. Talk about it. So Enigma, obviously my favorite play setups and for obvious reasons why these things cover so many great trade opportunities, uh, depending on, you know, what time of day, any time of day, really, these things are the bomb.com, which is why they are my primary go to right now. These things can call perfect pivot locations. When you get setups like this, uh, we've got the multis in a direction. It's so powerful. We have done some trading strategies around that recently. Make sure you go back and watch those videos here. And tonight, you guys can bring your questions. You got some, we got some people all the way from Miami. Beautiful. You guys hanging out with ICT. Apparently, ICT is uh, supposedly on a vacation, although it's the weirdest vacation I've ever seen where you literally tweet every single day during your vacation and spend two hour, uh, have two hour rants while you're in your hotel room. <laughs> that was. Very odd to hear ICT talk about how his wife was mad and out on the balcony, but because he was out there for two hours ranting again. I'm so, uh, surprise, surprise. Um, I am, yes, I'm buying time at the moment because I'm trying to head up here to find the Ask Vinny Questions section, which has been renamed. There it is, to ask questions. Here we go. All right, let's go through some of these good stuff here today. Let's start with something easy. Somebody had asked in the room, how do I adjust my charts? Because I had told them, hey, there's something wrong with your charts. Your charts are what I call flat. If your charts look like this, it's not supposed to look this way. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick tip on how to fix that. Let me move some of these little giffies out of the way here. And we'll pull that one. And we will pull this one. There we go. Okay, so if your charts start to look a little bit odd, again, everything that we do here is about visualizing price. Your charts should not look like this. Okay, this is flat. If you don't know that that's flat, eh, then you haven't seen enough of our setups. But you should be looking at my screenshots, other screenshots from other members. At the same time, take everything that you see from a member with a grain of salt. You see, say, you know, you see a member like having success and their charts look like this. Ah. You know, you may not want to necessarily go with what they're doing here. Your charts should not look like this. So how do you adjust some charts? I'll do some quick ones here tonight. Again, we have videos on all this stuff. So if you're wondering like, well, hey, you know, what's he talking about? Or I'm not going to catch all this tonight. That's fine. We actually have full videos around each of these topics. One of the first things I want to talk about is being able to grab this right hand price column. Okay, this is the price of the stock. Okay, this whole column right here. I'm going to grab it by left clicking, okay? L -C, L C for left click, okay? I'm gonna left click on it and I'm going to drag it, okay? See, so I'm gonna click right here and I'm going to drag it down and look what it does. You see how it's flattening out 
the bars and I'm going to go up and I'm going to let go. I'm going to drag it down again. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down and you see what this does, right? It's just bringing everything in, squeezing it down to almost absolutely nothing. Now I can see I've got some drawing objects down here, which reminds me of another thing I'm going to tell you guys tonight. Control R. Uh, I would bind the Control R for remove to remind yourself to remove all drawing objects. I just hit Control R and I'm gonna click yes. Boom, easy way to remove all those drawing objects. If you've been drawing things on your charts with uh, Fibonacci levels or any other levels and you just wanna erase everything quickly, Control R. Now that's not default out of the box. You will have to change that in your hotkeys settings. Go and um, type in Vinny E Mini hotkeys and go watch through our hotkeys video on some of that. So same thing, I can drag up and I can widen my stuff. So there you go. You see how I'm doing that? That is dragging it up and down. So practice that. Do it on your charts right now. Grab it. Get used to this. You're going to need to be able to widen your charts sometimes to see things a little bit clearer. You need to be able to have your charts adjusted so that you see everything. Everything here that we do <clears throat> is very visual. And of course, we do incorporate all the senses. We have the audio box to also involve your senses of your, your hearing senses but the visuals are extremely, extremely important. All right, have I dr drilled that home enough? Great, another one. Hold the control key, C-T-R-L. Okay, next thing, hold control, and I want you to do the same thing. Hold control, and I want you to click right there again and drag it down and watch the difference between holding control versus just click and drag. You saw what click and drag does, that's in and out. But now if I hold control, and you might have a situation where you know price is way down here, but you kind of maybe want to move that up so that the price kind of comes up here. This is what the control does. I'm going to hold control now and watch what happens if I click control. I'm going to click control and you see how now rather than widening it, I can literally move the entire thing up and down. Okay, try this for yourself right now. Hold control, slide it up and down. You got it? There we go. That's one. Now, someone had said, well, there are other ways to do that. Yes, in fact, my preferred way I like to use the control, again, control does a lot of cool things, control, and then I want to use the up or down, the plus or minus, which, um, actually, no, don't, don't, don't do that, not plus or minus, it's the down arrow on your keyboard and the up arrow, okay, so control up or control down, this will zoom in and zoom out as well but this is a little bit different this one you'll notice i'm getting less bars right some people uh, in fact the image that i just saw in someone else's was not from the squeeze in like we talked about before although you can you see how i can still make this bigger or smaller now you can tell my price is down here so what am i gonna do i'm gonna hold control and i'm gonna drag it up i would just play with your charts for a little bit in doing these different things that I'm telling you till you get just very familiar with doing it. You just have to do this a bunch of times and then you won't even think about it and you'll just know, okay? Like I might want to zoom this in. Okay, cool. Now I can see stuff very clearly, but you know, this is still too, too zoomed and we talk about that in a lot. So I'm going to hit control up, 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 up. There we go. Now that's how I get it. Now you can actually see the colors of my bars internally. I actually have a nice little navy blue color hidden in there. And sometimes you can't see because I have them. Generally, I don't want to see that color. It's another visual cue for me that I've got the proper zoom levels when I am in like this. Mine is usually gonna be around here or right here is typically the level of zoom in that I am using. All right, so now same thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drag it down and then I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna drag it up, okay? This looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna turn off my overlay for a moment so you can kind of see how the chart might look. Now, I can tell I need to hit control up, up, up a few more times to bring in some more of that price from the left. Control up, 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 there you go. Now, if you need to look to the left, let's say that you are doing uh, back tests um, and you wanna go to the left, one of the things, of course, yes, you can drag it to the right, you can grab the chart, I'm just clicking on the chart and moving it to the right, dragging it to the right, and you know, moving it left and right. This is pretty easy. But sometimes that gets annoying while you're sitting there. Okay, I gotta drag way. I wanna go see the morning open, right? That's my, it's a very common thing. I wanna see the open from today. Go all, go all the way to the left, or you can hold the page up. Page up, page up, page up, page up. There we go, there's the open right there. Or I can hold the page down and go back to where I was. Page down, and now it's gonna go multiple pages at a time. Okay, so get used to a few of those short keys and hot keys. Someone was asking, how do you adjust your charts? And then pay attention up here at the top right, whenever your charts get all messed up, there are some things up here in the top right hand corner of your chart you wanna pay attention to. Sometimes it's an arrow. The arrow will bring all the data right back onto your screen. That's one. 
and sometimes you will see an F button. That F stands for fix, or for me, I think that's what I call it. I don't know, they might have another name for it. I call it the fix, the fix it button, the F button. So I'm gonna click like this. If my chart gets all jacked up like this, I may want to come up there and press the fix button. You can see it right there, which will, this is sort of the auto fix button for you to kind of adjust things the way that it's called auto scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on F, boom, and that is going to apply the settings that I have on my chart trader settings, which again, I got a whole nother video on this, but I'm gonna show you briefly. I'm gonna go here, right click and go to properties on this chart and we will be able to see the margins. Right side margin is set to 100 right there. See that? 100 and I believe that is 100 pixels, not 100 bars, although don't quote me on that, it might be 100 bars, but my right side margin is set to 100. That means how much space I have over here on the right, and I believe that's, it looks like to me about 100 pixels over here. It's how much space I need on the right. If you want more space than that, you can increase that number or decrease that number. That's what happens when I pull like this. So this looks like, you know, this might be a thousand pixels. If you wanted yours like this, you like a lot of space over here on the right, you might want to adjust that right side margin. If I press the fix it button, it will um, change everything. Oops, the little arrow button, it will put everything back to where I have that set. Another one, right click in that column price bar, right click, go to properties. There we go. Inside of here, I've got upper margins and lower margins. This means how much space I've got at the top of my chart from the data and from the bottom of my chart right there. These are all things that I just want you in general to be able to adjust quickly for yourself. You should know how to do this, okay? Um, the overlay scale, I wouldn't really necessarily worry about these, but you can look at our default settings that I've got if you are pulling my workspaces, which is gonna be the next thing I'm gonna show you how to get my my own sent to you. Somebody said, fun fact, let's see, why are the Enigmas so fire? <laughs> They're awesome. Uh, it's because it's a lot of combinations of things, and it is also something that within our own AI, we have discovered patterns on the Z axis. I will tell it like that. Think about the Z axis. What's the Z axis? Patterns inside the Z axis is also included, which makes this an extremely powerful entry layout. And that's all the hints I'll give because the rest is enigmatic. And that's why we call it the enigma. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. And you can't make me. All right. I'm just kidding. All right. Anyhow. So um, there we go. There's your chart adjustments. Get familiar with those. You'll want to play with those to make adjustments to your chart, but you need to be able to be very familiar with being able to move things around. Sometimes you need to zoom them in, zoom them out, depending on you know what you're doing with your trade. And you need to be able to do it quickly. Because again, as we're playing this like a video game, move fast, move fast, move fast, move fast. So practice it, practice it, practice it so that it becomes second nature to you and you're not fumbling around when you really need to. I'll give you one more, hold the Alt key. Alt will fatten your bars, okay? So first I'm gonna zoom back out so you can actually see what our current bar thickness is. You kind of get the general idea, but watch what happens if I hold Alt instead of Control. Okay, this is gonna be the Alt key. Holding Alt and then pressing the up arrow or the down. Watch what this does. This is going to fatten your bars. If you want thicker bars, okay, you can make them fatter, you can make them skinnier, and I usually leave them with a slight little overlay right about there, but again, take your, take your pick on how you like them. Um, you know, there's some discretion with that. Again, I have suggestions for how you do it and I have a lot of reasons for that. But if you want to play with them, at least know what you're doing. Alt will change the thickness of your bars. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at questions here. I figure can't trade without it, would be able to trade with it. I uh, will do without Enigma. Thick like oatmeal. All right, fantastic. So let's uh, talk about workspaces. So I am going to reshare my workspace tonight while we are here with you. I am going to go into my workspaces tab and I'm going to save this current workspace and I'm going to save as and I'm going to call this Vinny underscore live stream underscore and I'm going to give it today's date and I'm going to do it in reverse order just because that's how I do dates and things 2023 underscore 05 underscore 16. Save. Now, I'm gonna go grab that from my own workspace here. So give me just one moment. I'm gonna go into my own personal files. So let me put you on hold just one moment, please. All right, so I'm going into my personal documents folder. And then I'm going into my Ninja Trader 8 folder. 
And then underneath Ninja Trader 8, you will find a folder called Workspaces. Now, depending on, you know, you, this is where all of your personal workspaces go and as well um, as the ones that we, um, that we save along the way. Let's see, why is that not showing in mine? One moment. Hmm, I did just save that, right? Save, live stream, 0515. As and I'm gonna save it underscore backup. So now I have two copies. There we go. That's my backup as well. There we go. Now that saves as a file with an extension .xml. And a lot of people know what that is. It's extensible markup language. I'm going to now copy this and I'm going to send it into our Discord room and I'll show you guys how you can grab this if you would like to. Let's come back to our main screen here. Now I'm gonna pull up our Discord room. And if you're ever looking for a particular thing in our room, uh, control K is your friend. Write it down. Control K. Always lots of things here to learn when you're out here on a mentorship Monday. Control K is the find inside of Discord. Control K. And all right, I need something called workspaces. All right. So I know I look for. Oh, look at that. There's community workspaces. Perfect. I'm going to go into community workspaces area and in here again anyone can share theirs it's not just me other people can share theirs if you like somebody's layout ask them if they could share their workspace with you you simply save the workspace go to the folder and then i'm going to drop the file right here okay and i'll call this benny's current live stream workspace and then i'll go ahead and give it a date just in case people are confused like oh i thought i had the latest all right 2023 dash 05 dash 16 and i'm going to do the at here to ping everybody that it's there boom so if you guys would like to go and grab my workspace it is as simple as going here into the community workspaces and there is the download button right there and the reason i say that you might want to get my live stream one is this is not out of the box um you know what we provide and again it's not i'm not trying to do that on purpose in fact in our next release i will go ahead and include this in the installer so if you're watching this video later you may already have this on your machine although it will probably not be that date for obvious reasons okay but i will try to incorporate my own as we go forward the live stream has a particular type of setup depending on what i'm trying to showcase for you guys and right now i'm trying to rub it in the face of the people who claim they have enigma aka inner circle trader ict the most disgusting um trader scammer in the entire trading industry, in my personal opinion. Uh, it's debatable between he and Peter Davies of Jigsaw and uh, John Matthew Cowart of Rocket Scooter. I don't know, it, it's it's neck and neck. They all have their reasons for why you might say they're the worst, but um, he claims he has the Enigma and yet I love rubbing in his face to show that, well, actually we have a real Enigma algorithm. All right, so you can grab that workspace and drop it into your own and I am, uh, I have removed a lot of additional items. You'll notice that this is kind of a, I would call it a clean layout, although I hate saying that because I don't think that even when I'm using all of my tool sets that it's necessarily messy. It's just from a perspective of things not being on your chart. Yes, the people who love to say, oh, my charts are so clean, I like clean charts. Well, who doesn't like a clean chart? But at the end of the day, if it's a clean chart, but it's a useless chart, I'll give a scripture passage for this one. Those of you guys who, um, know your Bible, you might know this one. The, the, there's a scripture passage that says that a, a stable without an ox is very clean. However, the stable with an ox is extremely useful. Now, what that implies is that, well, if you got an oxen in there, it might be messy, but it's messy for a reason, and you can get a lot of work done. Now, that's back in the day when, you know, oxen were the types of cows that would literally be able to do all the work around a farm which was, you know, represented wealth um, back in their day and their time. So a useful chart is not necessarily a clean chart and vice versa, unless you have the power of the Enigma, in which case, yes, a clean chart could also be a very useful chart. You get the picture. All right. If you didn't, well, rewind it and play it again and maybe start listening to more Proverbs so you can get smarter. All right. 
let's get into the next section here. So you've got my workspaces. We talked about moving things around. Let's go to a few more questions that came into the Ask Vinny Questions section, which is now renamed in case you have seen our old videos where this section used to be called Ask Vinny Questions. We have tried to consolidate a lot in our room, believe it or not, even as many you know, little side rooms as we have and information that's in our room. We have narrowed this down. We have removed quite a lot of things, especially for the free folks who come in they get overwhelmed by things. What's up, Aaron Korn? Hey, bro, I'm calling you tomorrow. I meant to call you earlier today. I apologize, I didn't get to you, but I will give you a shout tomorrow. So don't screen my crawls. Don't screen my calls, bro. All right, bro, I'll give you a shout tomorrow. Um, okay, so we answered that question there on the flattened charts. Um, let's start down here. Dowing said, hey, Vinny, Mentorship Monday. I was curious. If you could share some knowledge on your experience with slower markets. Oh, I'm glad you asked because there was another person who actually asked that as well up above. And we had a great opportunity to see how our tools can help you out in slower markets and showcase how it can literally tell you there are some days that you should not trade and our system will specifically spell that out. Great question. Said so maybe touch on patterns over a year or months. Touch on patterns. Um, Dowing, come back and give me an example of what you mean by patterns. Uh, that can mean a lot of things. I, I mean, I know what a pattern is, but what are you meaning? Everybody means different things when they say patterns, right? What do you, you what are you talking about? You're talking about like big picture, macro events, time of year. Are uh, you looking at seasonality? Is that what you're talking about? That's another term that you might be calling a pattern. I don't know what you mean by that, but we'll talk about it. Also, I've seen isolated events like a 2019 slowdown mentioned. Um, yes, I have had a video talking about the extreme slowness and what was that driven by? That was low volatility, extremely low volatility when the VIX literally reached single digits, which is almost never a thing. In fact, people bet against the VIX going up forever all the time and they also bet against it staying low forever. And, and so anytime it gets low, they will take bets that it goes up and then when it gets super high they take bets that it goes down because in general you can um you know betting with or against volatility um you can actually trade that instrument called the vix but the vix in 2019 what he's asking about is what happened in 2019 the short answer is this the vix the monstrous again there's multiple ways to measure volatility i'm you know there's different ones for different markets but you know what i'm saying the vix in general all of the vixes plural got into single digits like a, a number like a nine i think it went as low as eight possibly you may remember what what it was what the absolute low was somebody find that out 2019 vix which one got the absolute lowest but again single digits normally this is uh you know somewhere in the neighborhood in the you know, 10s to 20s, when it spikes, it's in 30s, 40s, and like super duper high, it's hit, you know, 70s, 80s. But to get into single digits, um, what that does is it makes the markets um, quite difficult for an intraday trader because we make more money when we have more opportunity with more volatility because we love that intraday volatility. Now, long-term investors, they love the slow and steady, right? Who doesn't love just a little, little creeping, market creeping up and up and up and up? You know, they love that. But those of us who are intraday traders, we want the waves. We need more waves so that we can take advantage of those small turns in the markets and collect those checks. Am I right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, trial members don't have access to it. Hmm, that's true. Do I want to open Pandora's box there? Mm, no, I don't. Yeah, uh, Aaron Korn pointed out a good point. If you're watching this video and you are a free member, I'm not going to open that workspaces section to you. I'm not going to complicate your life with it, and I'm not going to increase our support levels having to deal with, whoa, my workspace isn't working, and that's not working. Bro, no, I'm not going to open up the tickets for that. So uh, thank you for reminding me of that, but I should go ahead and mention to everyone, yes, if you're looking for that workspaces area, it is not available to the free section. These are for members only. You are, I hate to use the word stuck, but I'll go ahead and use it for lack of better terms here for the moment. You're stuck with the ones that come out of the box um, or make your adjustments. And again, you can make yours look like mine. There, there's, you can like, if you're watching a live stream, but for, I, I will say the workspace adjustments should be for the savvier player as of right now. Now, if I do a release again, a release, we're uh, doing another release in June. And during that June release, I will, you know, put out the current version of what I have. You know, this is a three chart layout. 
and I will include that. So they'll just have to wait until the next install. So free trial members, if you are trialing this later on, if you're hearing this after June the 1st, then just check your workspaces and there will be a three chart layout like this one included in your installer. Make sense? Very cool. Let's move on. Uh, but thank you for that note, Aaron. Always helpful, bro. That's why I want to talk to you. You're, you're awesome, dude. Great having you in the crew. Is there anything we should keep an eye out for monthly daily news or story time advice around those types of markets? Yeah, so we kind of talked about that right there. In general, our focus, I will tell you what we focus on is the intraday stuff. Okay, our system, what we capitalize on is the intraday moves. We are less concerned with the macro events. Um, I'm not saying we don't care about any of them. In fact, we love it when there are things like planned volatility. What's planned volatility? Things like, what did it go to 8.5? Yeah, 8.5, it's crazy low. Okay, so somebody answered the question there in the chat and said that VIX got as low as 8.5, single digits, insane. Um, a lot of people lost a lot of money there too because they were, they were betting that it wouldn't go under 10. And then it went under nine. They're like, well, it's definitely not going under nine. And then people were like heavy betting that it wouldn't go lower than nine. And then it went to 8.5, wrecked a lot of people uh, who were gambling on the VIX, if you will. I mean, it, for history, for history would have said that was a good bet, but it turned out to not be for that one time and wrecked a whole lot of people. But yes, we focus on the smaller time frames. That is where our edge is. Um, so it's not really necessary, but I can share stories for sure. Um, what are views on the possibilities around the current market? Current market in general? Yes, we have a fantastic opportunity here because there is a lot of turmoil. Everything from we are approaching the you know presidential elections coming up, not this year, but the following year. So we are, you know, there's gonna be places positioning themselves. There are fears of central bank currencies that are coming. I mean, literally some CDBC is, you know, talking about being released. I say possibly, but there is rumor that the CDBC in the United States will be released in July. We're talking about a month away, uh, a month and a half now, almost. Uh, so maybe within two months that there could be a CDBC here in the United States. Um, yeah, hard time in the 16s. Yeah, I imagine it was down the eights. Yeah, that was, a, that was a tough year. I barely squeaked out 60K that year. That was tough. Um, but that year I made a lot in crypto. Like crypto kind of made up for it for me. Um, I had jumped into the crypto space. I made 450K in a single year on crypto. Um, but 60K in futures, think of the irony behind that. Very odd stuff there. Um, what are your views on the possibility right now? Okay, let's see, is it is it better to sit sessions or days than take increased risk of shifting in and out of lower speeds or things to avoid these conditions? You want my general guideline around that? Um, yeah, better to sit out. Like I, I kind of talk about um, if all of a sudden one day, um, let's talk about your situation where like you are making an hourly rate. If you are used to getting paid 50 an hour, okay, and then all of a sudden your boss says, well, if you come out today, your hourly rate will be sliced in half. Well, I don't think most people would go to work if they were gonna get paid half, okay, but maybe. But what if they said, forget half, I'm not even gonna pay you half, um, I'm gonna pay you a quarter of your hourly wage but you have the option to come to work that day or not you could go on vacation you know whatever um, or you could come in here and bust your tail for a quarter of what you normally get paid right i mean <laughs> you might not take that up and some people might so i would give it like that if you're going to get a pay you're going to get paid a quarter of what it is but you have to take the same risk you're doing the same level of work but you're only going to get a paid a quarter of what you normally make my question to you would be what's your answer would you avoid going to work that day or would you go in there and hang out anyway? I'll put it one more example. In the terms of a business owner, if you are a restaurant, are you going to fully staff on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the morning in the same way that you would staff for a Friday night at your restaurant? If you know that a Tuesday is gonna be low traffic in your business, 
you would low staff, right? Or not staff at all. In fact, often many restaurants are closed in the mornings on Tuesday, right? They might open up at noon. You see where I'm going with this? You want to be there, like treat this like a business. And once you have decided that the business is going to be run like a business and you want to have rules, imagine if I were to move this over and if I turn on my overlay right now, my giant X's over my charts are telling me this is bad speed, right? The whole point of that X is to say it's bad speed. Now, could you have made money here? Yeah, in fact, look, like these are these are all great. Okay, go to the long side, right? Making money, cool. Um, you know, discount this one or maybe you exit on these, but could you have made money here? Yes. How long would that have taken you? Maybe double, triple, quadruple the amount of time because the speed is bad. Could you make money in it? Yes, but sometimes the markets are super slow and this is just kind of back and forth. So I would put it, the question really is, and I hate to use those, you know me, I'm a black and white type of person. I don't want to have to, I, I don't like the gray areas, but this unfortunately is one of those where I would say, like the answer is up to you and the answer varies. But if you're asking my opinion, I put a giant blue X over the charts for a reason. I personally believe that it's not worth your time. You follow me on that? You guys get that? Type me a one in the chat. If you don't or disagree, type a two, and that's okay too. But as long as you're typing a number, I'm happy. You're happy, I'm happy. And don't forget, smash that like button real quick. Take a moment, smash that like button so you got good luck in your trading the rest of this month. How about that? All right, next one. What would be your advice for a new small account versus experienced larger traders in these times? Um, so small account, this is going to get deep here. So what does a small account mean in general? Okay. So define small account. Number one, always define it because a small account to one person is not a small account of another. Um, you know, a $10,000 account to me is small. Okay. But to some people, 10,000 account might, that be, might, might be large. Right, um, a medium-sized account would be something in the neighborhood of ten to twenty thousand for me. I'd be like, oh, that's you know, it, it's it's mid-range, cool. Um, you know, a large account would be fifty thousand or more to me. But again, that's you need to define it. Number one, and you might say, oh, well, Vinny, there's some idiot that's going to go out there. Like, oh, ha, ha, Vinny thinks a fifty thousand dollar account is large. I'm talking about in terms of futures, and in futures. Um, let's do some more information. I'll give you even more info here tonight. A lot of people don't know. What are the max values that you can trade for a contract count on the majority of the instruments that we trade? And that particularly I'll say, so NQ, RTY, DAO, these three instruments, let's pop quiz. What is the max number of contracts? You guys tell me, what's the max number of contracts I can trade on these three instruments? On the big three here, what is the max number of contracts you can trade in a discount broker? And I'm not talking about, you know, your limits on your trader funding program. Yes, those of you guys who typed in 50, that is a, that is correct. So write that down if you didn't know that, 50. So how much money to max out the maximum number of contracts on any given instrument on NASDAQ, it's $50,000. So when I say that's, you know, as a large account, it's because that's absolutely the largest you could have to trade NASDAQ because it's a thousand dollars a contract. If you know, some people don't know that. Yes, it's a thousand dollars a contract. Now you might be asking yourself if you're a trader funding program, be like, well, why is a trader funding program saying I have a fifty thousand dollar account, but they're only letting me trade 10 contracts? Oh, you're getting deep now. You're getting into my problem with why I have problems with trader funding programs because they're not really, in my opinion, being completely honest with you because if you were doing discount brokers, it's only a thousand dollars a contract on the high side for NASDAQ. And I say high side because how much is it for RTY, YM, and let's throw in the guy that I tell everybody, if you don't know, you should not be trading the ES very much. The ES should be used as a guide. This should be the last thing you ever trade. I say this all the time. Do not trade ES unless the markets are super duper hot. Okay. Now, Pop quiz while we're here. What is the maximum number of contracts you can trade on the ES? What is the maximum number of contracts you can trade on the ES? These are all things that as a trader, you should know. In my opinion, if you are going to be a business owner, you need to know these things. <clears throat> Some people are saying 500. That is inaccurate. 
Oof. Sad to say. 100. Ninja Scalp with the... F getting it right again. That's right. Ninja Scalp's been paying attention. It's 100. Write these down, folks. The maximum on ES with a normal standard broker. Yeah, and it, um, discount brokers. Those are things like Dorman, Phillips, Ninja Trader, Amp. All those guys. Trade of 8. 50 and 100 for these. Okay. <clears throat> so, at 100... Do you see? Well, how much is an ES contract? It's only $500 a contract. So do you see how the 50K still gets you to the max? The maximum number of contracts. If you were to go all out, max, 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 100 contracts. How much money do you need to be able to trade 100 contracts? Pop quiz. How much money do you need in your account to trade 100 contracts on the ES? If you want to go 100 contracts short or 100 contracts long, how much money would you need in your account? We're getting into some math now. Somebody said 5,000. Somebody said 50. 50K. Boom. There it is. You would need 50K. Exactly. Going right to it right there. 50K. That is exactly the max. Why I say, like, that's technically to me, that's a large account. Not because it's like, oh, it's a lot of money. No, I'm not saying it's a lot of money. I'm just saying for trading, 50K would be a large account. In fact, it is a max account for any one of these. Now, let's say you wanted to do 50K on NASDAQ, 50K on RTY, 50K if you were trading four instruments. So then what would your max be? Now you guys see why I say max, you would need like a 200K account. You would never need really more than that if you're trading four instruments. If you're trading more than four instruments, like what are you doing with yourself, right? Unless you are diversifying across full auto and then I tell you to trade how many? Seven or eight, why is that? Ecclesiastes principle. So what do you need with the max of that? You, you get my whole point, right? This goes on, but you're asking, so I'm answering your question. You guys asked, small account, large account, and how would you adjust? I wanted to define that first and now I'll come back and I'll answer your question. You following so far? All right, so define your small account once you have defined it. Now let's talk about what you should do with it. All right, so you said small account versus large. Um, small is harder, okay? It is, it is harder. Is it impossible? No. Is it harder? Yes. Um, you have more flexibility when you start to have the large. This is, uh, if you, any, any poker player will tell you that it is easier to play when you have what they call the big stack versus a short stack, uh, meaning how many poker chips you have on the table because you have more um, opportunities for sizes. You have more size opportunities. You can um, micro scale or macro scale. And with that brings in, speaking of micro scaling, we have the micro option that we never had before. And if you would have asked me this maybe five years ago, uh, actually, when did somebody tell me what year did the micros come in? It might've been more than five years now, but when I was first out there, I would have never imagined that the micros would have ever existed. The tenths of contracts, that was that's a crazy concept to me. I just always thought it was gonna be one contract, two contracts, three contracts, four. Um, but yes, you can, you can stack them. So with a small account, it might be easier for you with micros, um, but that depends on what? On your goal. So you need to define your goals. So once we've defined your account size, well, do we start there or do we start with goals? You might need to start with your goals, but this is, this is elusive. I would say you don't have to start with goals and go to account. You can go with account and, and max, you know, make your goals, or you can start with your goals and go backward. It depends on what you're planning on doing. It depends on if you're planning on working a full time job. It could work. It could plan on. Um, it could depend on whether or not you have a spouse or significant other who is, you know, paying the bills, or you're living at home. Um, what are your bills? What are your necessities? Are your necessities already been, you know, taken care of? Um, are you, are you trying to do this full time? And this is, you're the only one bringing in the money. Like there's a lot of factors that go into this. This is why it's a complex issue. And I'm not trying to complicate it. You guys know me, I'm trying to simplify it. But if I explain all the different items to you, then you will be able to hopefully more simply answer the question for yourself. And what are the goals? I'm talking about specifically profit goals. Now to what granularity? Um, Generally, in my opinion, 
you're always trying to find now i'm a data person so i'm all about granularity right the lowest granularity what is granularity this is one of these that before you ever start a database project one of the first things you should define is what is your grain the granularity how low and how small what is the what is your basis for all other things what is the smallest unit that you can go to so in our case most of the time it would be an hourly rate but is hourly really something that you want to apply to trading in general not really you might want to go to probably the granularity of the day however i'm going to argue this point here for a minute but i'm going to point them out daily or hourly which one is correct now these aren't the only two options what about weekly you get my point you could go to whatever granularity you could go all the way to yearly how much do you want to make per year now i think you're not going to go beyond yearly I'd say that the max, the highest one at the end over here would be if you want to base this on your yearly. Enigma short on the NQ1. If you're talking about yeah, salary level, um, because you got taxes, right? And taxes are per year type of thing. So I don't think you're going to think beyond a how much you're going to make per year. But on the lowest, you might want to go to hourly. I don't think it makes any sense to go, you know, finer grain than that, minute per minute. But, you know, you could extrapolate from that. But this is your lowest grain. Does everybody understand that? If you get it, type grain in the chat if you don't put some question marks there because i want to see if i've you know gotten to you understanding like what level you should decide this on your hourly rate your yearly rate or your daily rate i will say one that is very common is right here most people like when i ask them you're like well how much are you wanting to make and stuff in general and i try to leave out the the daily but oftentimes they will tell me in daily they will say I want to make a thousand dollars a day i want to make 500 dollars a day i think that's normal for the uh, humans we want to go okay my daily i would like to make 500 a day make 100 a day 200 a day it's pretty pretty normal okay now can we do hourly oh this is the beautiful thing about algo box all right let's bring in how algo box changes the game and i'm not even playing around that is um you know a pretty good moniker like changing the game algo box well it does algo box does let you think on an hourly rate how why because if you look at our five trade sheet that i've got up here you know in our i'm waving at you hello everyone there's my hand the hand of fate bestoweth upon thee the five trades per hour so do you see how the algo box brings this down to what could be an hourly rate so if you are doing 500 over five trades, and those are going to be between 60 to 90 minutes, and yes, I know it's not really an hour, but 60 to 90 minutes, pretty close to your hourly rate, you can approximate your hourly rate, exactly. Hourly, in a single hour, how much are we making? Now, does that translate from, oh, so if I make $500 an hour, then I can multiply that times eight because there's eight working hours in a day? No, it doesn't work like that. Don't think of it like, a person who is a worker job job what is job 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 just over broke you want to be just over broke no not just here just to be able to pay your bills let's let's speak exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think um speak abundance so that you can take care of others not just yourself it's actually very selfish to pray that the lord only take care of your own needs nobody ever really thinks about that but i try to reinforce it do not pray that the lord only take care of just your base level needs that is selfish Pray that he bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think so that you can take care of yourself and others. That would be what I would suggest as a prayer for yourself. Change the way that you pray. Don't ask for things just for yourself. Ask it for yours and others. Got it? Cool. Now, in the algo box terms, not every single hour of the day is hot. In fact, I show you in our stats when we are trying to do optimizations, what do we break that down by? the hours we want to find well what hours of the day is this working best when we're doing our optimizations and then we want to run our system during those hours right and how many hours in general do i tell you to go at this per day two how do we know that because i say a morning and an afternoon right morning and an afternoon and hey if it's good enough for god why is it not good enough for us what are we talking about what do you mean it's good enough for god morning and afternoon well it's more like in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and each day he said and the 
morning and the evening were the first day. Isn't that interesting? Or the evening and the morning, which I think is interesting because he says them backwards. Although it really kind of reinforces for me that I'm like, hey, God's a night person too. He said evening and the morning were the first day. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And the evening and the morning were the... It's really interesting, isn't it? I think it's interesting. So morning and afternoon. So we got our evening and our morning. You got me? Two. So if it's good enough for him, why isn't it good enough for us, right? Let's go. Alpha and Omega. Oh yeah, we got Alpha Omegas. We do. It's cool. Um, so we're talking about our crosses, of course. Algo Box can break this down to an hourly rate. So to answer your question, yes, full swing back. To answer your question, how do you decide and what are the advantages and disadvantages? So small account. Yeah, it's a little bit harder because you don't have as many segments. And I literally mean, how do you divide up X number of dollars, right? If you have a thousand bucks, there's only so many ways that you can divide that up. If you have hundreds of thousands, now you got all kinds of ways you can split this. You get the point? So it's gonna, you've got more options to work with. Um, and your position, and I'm talking about specifically in your position sizing, okay? If you're a small account, you're limited on that. And I have said that if you're starting out with the smallest level of account that you can get from us, then you wanna make sure that you are Consider it that pretend visually that you've got your back against the wall. And if you got your back against the wall, you know what they say, like that oftentimes you fight the hardest and that's what you literally have to do. Yeah, man, I'm a night, I'm not out too. <laughs> my, my mornings, I'm, I'm slower, man. I am, I'm not firing all cylinders in the morning just for me in, in general. Uh, I would like to be, and I continue to pray that the Lord one day give me the energy to be as energetic in the mornings as I can be in the evenings. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know that's what's going to happen or not, but uh, it doesn't hurt to ask, right? So smaller versus larger, easier to play. There we go. All right. Um, this other question, small account versus experience, larger. And just because you're experienced, folks, I have people come in here all the time who are very experienced who have small accounts. Okay. Because their experience, quote unquote, you know, has led them. Well, I got a lot of experience with ICT. Okay. You got a lot of experience with learning how to lose. Well, that's great. Once you're done with all that crap, you might come here. So I've got experienced traders who come here with nothing. So just because you're experienced does not mean you have larger accounts. In fact, it's also oftentimes the opposite. Somebody comes who's brand new, got a lot of money, brought come in bright eyed, bushy tan. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my fifty thousand dollar, you know, I've been saving up now, I'm gonna go for it, or I get it, I got an inheritance, or I got whatever, I got a, a boom in whatever you, they did, and like I got fifty K to go at this. And they have the least amount of experience. But hopefully they wise up. If they're wise they will see the advantage of getting into systems where you're using, I mean, technology in 2023. Why would you not be using technology if you're in 2023? The whole joke of ICT and other places where they're drawing lines on charts still, like trying to come into a calculator fight with an abacus. Like, what are you talking about? Now, y'all might need to Google some of that. Some of you guys are too young to know what those things are. Never seen them, never heard of them before. Like, what's a calculator? Y'all don't even have calculators anymore. You're like, oh, right, let me check my phone. What's a calculator? What's a TI-85? What's a TI-83, huh? What's that? Uh... Google it, ask your mom. Um, let's see, is there a certain strategy tool should be focused on more closely during slower speeds? It's saying strategies slash tools on slower speeds. So again, you got a weird mindset. I would change the mindset of why are you opening your business on a Tuesday morning? Now you can, if you are just like, I need to be there, well, that's fine. What you should expect, all you have to do is then adjust your expectations. What are your expectations on a day when it is slow and you got X's all over your charts, your expectations, if you're still doing like, how am I going to get my 500 a day? Well, if you are locked in and that mental capacity this is why I tell you, don't limit yourself on thinking in a area of like, okay, I'm going to get my profit target. I'm going to quit for the day. That's not what you should do. I tell you trade your five trades, or if you're trading the Enigma, what do I say? Winner, winner, chicken dinner after two winners, boom, that's your chicken dinner. That's what you've got. What, how much did you make on those two winners? It shouldn't be a, oh, every day I'm making exactly this. The markets are not that consistent. And for you to pretend like you can be consistent in inconsistent markets is stupid. Anyone telling you otherwise is a liar and a fool like ICT. Um, I understand it's our responsibility to be available to trade the market when it is strong and not force it. Any insight would be greatly appreciated. Well, I have coded all that for you. You don't have to think about it um, as much. Now I'm not saying don't think about it. Okay, look, if you want to think about it, it's fine. However, I have made it easier. I have created the psychology module inside of the Algobox speedometer. So my answer to that question is this right here. My advice 
is be wise and let the tools do the work. Let the tools tell you if you should be trading or not. Okay, now you can adjust this. I have them out of the box set to defaults and you can adjust those on your own. You are welcome to do that, but I have them set to the settings that I would have set. And what do I mean by that? I'll show you. So inside of the speedometer, um, you're gonna have, this is the average. So this is the average over the last four minutes. And this is now. Now that's not to the penny. There are, we're doing a, we're doing some calculations in here, but it should be a per bar. Uh, item, but there, there's, um, we don't want to be too chatty. So we have some adjustments in here. This is not adjusting every single millisecond. Well, I want it to be readable because I did, we have it, we had it at one point where I was just, just showing it constantly like a, a perfect speedometer all the time. And I don't think that was helpful. I want to know what it was. I want to check it. And then I want to check it another minute from now. I don't want to be getting it every single second. So, um, you know, within a minute's time you will have an update on what the speed is makes sense um let's see give out can you sorry i was reading some of the questions there cool so psychology module there is a high side and a low side to those so i'm gonna go into my indicators and i'll show you the settings that you can adjust on the speedometer and the speedometer should be your guide in my opinion on how you decide if you should be or should not be inside of the play there you go now by default, remember I said the four minutes, you can change that. If you wanna see the average over more time or less time, however you wanna do this, you can change this and it is per minute and it is an integer value, so you will need to do it in increments of one. But uh, minutes, there it is, four minutes there. The high value, the low value, that's right there. So I want to draw a X if the value is too low. Uh, the low is defined by 25. Now, if you have a higher time frame and you want to lower that, totally makes sense. But in general, I am, you know, adjusting this for the lowest time frame chart, which is for us going to be algo bars, ones, twos, or threes. And watch our other videos around that. I'm not going to go into detail on that here tonight, but here it is. High value, 170. If it's higher than 170, I want to draw an X. If it's lower than 25, I want to draw an X to remind myself that, hey, it's probably not a good time to trade. Make sense? There you go. So psychology module is my answer to your question. Great questions there. Thank you for putting all those together there. Dow, let's get to the next one. When optimizing LunchBot, the video states using ranges for the optimizer, but we typically trade on algo bars and I noticed the default LunchBot workspace has ABs loaded. Yes, I talk about all that in the video. Do we run the bot on range charts instead or using the corresponding? I answer all that in the video. Um, optimizer da, 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 da. in advance. I was just a little unclear after watching the videos. Look, I will tell you this is exactly why I finally put my foot down and I am no longer supporting full auto because you guys refuse to get the information out of videos. Like there's not even like a bunch of videos around. This is a one video to solve them all. It's in a single video. And for some reason you can't take the notes or listen to the part where I say it. You want me to come back and repeat it. And I am tired of it. I, we have more help desk and more support issues with people like just messing this up left, right, up, down, and sideways doing it all wrong. And I just finally was like, dude, it is not worth it. We are not dealing with full auto anymore so much so that i'm not even going to answer your question here tonight but thank you for giving me the opportunity to point out why i don't is because you're like oh, i had a hard time understanding it after watching the videos folks if you're telling me that i'm unclear in my videos i oh, really uh my wife actually even joked one time she said you know the reason you didn't grow as much as all of some of these other groups and things is because you're so clear in your videos nobody has any questions afterwards whereas you watch an ict video and you have so many questions at the end that people are like asking a thousand questions down in the comments so algo box or, uh, or the algorithm on youtube is being like oh this guy must be super popular and all they're doing is asking a bunch of questions because they're like i have no idea what he just said what is he saying what is he saying i gotta ask questions i gotta ask questions so yeah, I don't think you can complain about me being unclear. I am overly clear, in fact. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on that and just go, look, if you can't figure it out, don't use LunchBot. How about that? Um, we don't even sell it anymore, by the way. Um, except with this one time exception here, if you join before June, I am including the bots. And I will support everybody who's got those, but I'm not going to also increase all the... We're not getting a bunch of tickets <laughs> to... Uh, to solve all the problems that are already explained in videos. And if you can't learn it from a video, seriously, like I cannot help you. Okay. Uh, the biggest question I keep asking is how do you value the strength of each different setup entry signal? I'll be in a trade, i.e. enter a DCDM long for a continuation, move to the upside, then a fib dot or an enigma short. 
shows up while I'm in the move and I freeze? Do I close the position due to opposing signals or do certain signals outweigh others? Okay, so a lot of talking, not a whole lot of screenshotting. Um, <laughs> I just call it out like I see it. This guy's name is Options Trading Coach. This is why we have problems in our industry. That implies that he is a coach coaching people how to trade options. That is scary to me to hear something written like this, but let's skip past, you know, that words mean anything, because apparently these days um, words don't matter. Um, but in a world of those of us who do think that words still matter, the answer is, again, I think he's semi-new with us and you need to go through the videos. Um, you are still out here, I don't wanna say still, but you're going directly into our system and trying to trade on day one. This guy is fairly new with us. Um, you know, look, I don't mind answering these types of questions, but this is all spelled out in the videos. It's the order of operations. Okay. Order of ops. OOP. I go call it the oops. Okay. Order of operations. You need to go and understand like you didn't include high time frame. So like you think that you're giving me a lot of information here, but you're not, you're not giving me the context because you would already know that if you went through the videos, I talk about this. I talk about what happens when they are, what you're talking about is conflicting signals, conflicting signals will be guided by what? Higher time frame. They go on to set him. Full pause there. It comes from the bias of the higher time frame. So, did you tell me what the higher time frame was when these events occurred? No, you didn't. And what what are your strengths? What are your three to five strategies that you have mastered? If you're still trying to be a master of all, again, I've said this, like jack of all trades, master of none, you're new with us you need to master a few of these first but if you're you know you don't know what all of these are that is because again you're not a master of all of them and as far as a dot you said if a fib dot shows up well i've already you already know the answer to this or you should trade nothing alone so a dot by itself means nothing you need to combine it with something else now enigma sure enigma that's a very powerful signal okay against your play there okay i would enigma overrides all i would say all I mean, in general, the Enigma is very powerful, but under what circumstances? You need to know the context. I'll put it, start out with, the best thing to tell you is context. What's the context? Higher time frames, order of operations, tide, wave, ripple, and where are you evaluating from the higher time frame? If you're just playing a lower time frame, entry, entry, and exit, entry, exit, well, then, yes, you would want to close out your position. If you don't have higher time frame context, I always say this when in doubt, stay out. Okay, so your answer is when in doubt, stay out. And right now, if you are in doubt, honestly, you should be staying out. Okay, I think you're jumping the gun, trading too early. I hope you're not trading live. I hope this is, you know, a sim question right now. Um, but go through the videos. I would definitely say, these answers are definitely in our, I'd love to call them the boot camp, but um, I think the videos are too long to call it a boot camp yet. I am planning on doing a boot camp this summer where we've got some shorter stuff. Um, and I think Mike Schwartz had talked to me a little bit about, you know, he was planning on kind of doing one, but then I think he eventually figured out how hard that is because, um, yeah, it's it's not easy, not easy to do, but um, it would be great for that to be, but you need to go through the videos uh, on the left-hand side, make sure you get through them all. And these questions are answered there, but uh, hopefully I answered that for you on that one and give you enough chastisement again don't forget even when i'm an a-hole i still love you and i'm doing it for your own good um a couple questions for tonight's winter show uh is windows 11 now recommended again i hate these ones it depends but here are the hard numbers if you have a an 11 900 or below this is talking about an i9. So you have an i9 and there is a series number. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it or ask your mom. No, your mom probably doesn't know either, but here it is. i9 11900 or below, you should have Windows 10, okay? You need Windows 11 if you have anything greater than that. Why is that? It has to do with the way that the CPUs um, are doing their multi-threading and hitting their um, maximum outputs, you have to have Windows 11. Don't ask me why they did that, but starting in the 12 series, okay, 12, 900 or above, actually not 900 there. I think the lowest one is a 12, 700. 12, 700 and above on the i9s, you will need Windows 11. Okay, that answers that question. 
Is Karen's time sync no longer recommended? I don't recommend you guys do any kind of time sync because you guys all mess it up. I wish I had never even mentioned Karen's time sync because you guys all flop them up anyway. And you're like, oh, I'm gonna put it to, I'm gonna have it resync every second. And next thing you know, your time clocks are all like messed up when Ninja Trader's trying to fight your time clocks. I'm trying to count how many trades have come through with an X number of seconds. And you guys got this stupid thing going over there, auto syncing every half minute. You're like, oh no, Vinny, I'm gonna sink in every half minute. I'm like, you're 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 fucking it up. Okay, pardon my French, but you are really messing this up for yourselves, and it's super frustrating when you guys keep putting this stuff on. No, no, the answer is absolutely no. Stop putting on time sync software on your computer. Extreme tuning utility, the XTU for Intel. Um, I have used it. I hate it. It doesn't do what you want it to do most of the time. It's very difficult to use. You'll probably hear that even from other YouTubers who are actually using it are like, dude, this thing can really you know mess things up for you. Be very careful when you start messing with the um, tuning utility in general. You're usually trying to overclock when you're doing this and you need to know specifically reasons why you are doing the overclocks and you eh, this is a very advanced level user type of stuff and you've got to be able to undo it i will say this if you're using the extreme tuning utility i'm not supporting it um and you'll need to do a lot of research and homework online to do it and my biggest um hint on it would be make sure that you know how to undo whatever you have done <laughs> so start with a plan of a backup Kind of like we do with our workspaces. I tell you, if you're gonna save a workspace, save two of them so you have a backup, okay? So back up your configuration settings before you go so you can reverse them because no doubt you will, the first few times at least, you are going to mess this up. So yeah, be very careful. And no, I do not recommend it. I just cannot emphasize how much I do not recommend doing it. Um, there are other ways to safely, I don't even say overclock, but enabling XMP and some of the other stuff I've told you guys about, you know, check a video online on a few of that of, of those things. Do I believe that you could overclock with our system? Yeah, because our system really doesn't overheat your system anyways. We, there's low risk to our load, because if you are familiar with overclocking, our load is not a multi, um, multi-threaded heavy, utilization type of workload so if you were to overclock meaning individual cpu settings on the high side that actually would benefit them because we're not going to necessarily usually overload them anyways but you would have to be careful of the other things you're doing on your pc if you were doing gaming and other stuff like that that would use all of that that all of a sudden those could put you in heat ranges that would cause your system to constantly blue screen etc so need to be careful that understand workloads and all the things that any overclocker will teach you about on YouTube. And no, we don't support it. Somebody said the other day, well, Vinny, you recommended and your recommendations for overclocking. No, I don't make any recommendations for overclocking. So uh, don't blame me if you're overclocking, please. All right. Um, somebody asks, is there enough liquidity in NQ to enter 20 contracts at a time? Uh, it's a very generic question for a very flexible answer that uh 20 contracts at the open sure 20 contracts in the middle of the night probably not a good idea 20 contracts at noon maybe not a good idea 20 contracts toward the end of the day final seven minutes it might be okay the answer is that would depend and finally though the override of all of those could you trade 20 contracts he didn't say if this is a live account a sim account well on a sim account sure we'll go to town um, on a trader funding program, what's the answer on a trader funding program? Tell me, can you do 20 contracts on a trader funding program? Might be a trick question, but not really. I will say in general, if you're on a trader funding program, 20 contracts, yes. The answer would be yes. This is a short answer in general because they're not really live accounts, right? Does everybody know that? By now, you should know that. If you don't, man, please do some studies and homework on what the trader funding programs are. They are just bets against the market or for the market. You are betting on it and you're hoping, another bet, you're betting that the trader funding program has enough funds to pay you out or that they are willing to pay you out because they're not actually, you're not making any money from the markets whatsoever you are actually betting against the trader funding program, which that's, I just don't think that's ever, I don't want to say ever. Sometimes it's a good idea. Okay. If they're going to pay you out, great. If you're using one of these groups in the United States, at least you can sue them. 
to get your money if they don't pay you you know you've got a contract with them but uh if it's a f one outside the united states or a place that's not protected be careful pick your trader funding programs wisely uh, but yes they are those are fake so 20 contracts on a trader funding yes isn't that cool if you're in a live account the answer is sometimes but as someone said down below coop had advised why don't you do like what Vinny teaches if you're watching my videos i teach you if you're going to do you're going to get to 20 contracts you should build to it and you should do them in how do you say two at a time yes one or two at a time is best so that you don't stand out like a sore thumb with your giant block order hitting the tape because one day i'm going to do a beginner's course on all this stuff and show you guys starting from the very beginning of what is the market what is the market defined by the granularity down to one line the market is actually only three columns wide of data and it's very small did y'all know that it's only three columns wide what is it time price and quantity write it down time price quantity time price quantity that's it and that's the tape anybody who tells you that the tape is our bars or charts like ict run away they're frauds and they're stupid i mean not only is he a fraud he's stupid he literally thinks that's reading the tape if a chart if you're looking at a chart and they're bar charts and you're saying you're reading the tape you're an idiot you're literally an idiot you're lying to people ah, the tape yeah because the tape sounds cool it's like ooh, what's tape Ooh, it's elusive bro the tape actually looks like tape and it is time price and quantity and ict Again, another fraud. If they're only telling you that there's only time and price, time and price, it's all you need, time and price. Or some people are like, oh, only price. The markets are three dimensions. How do we know that? Because I already told you the granularity of a chart is time, price, and quantity. It's three dimensions. You see it? X, Y, Z. X, Y, and Z. So anybody who's not teaching you all three dimensions, do you really think they're teaching you well? No, they're not. If they're teaching you two dimensions, well, that kind of sucks. I'm going to draw this drawing here real quick. There's a story of a girl who lived in two dimensions. Okay. Here she is right here. Okay, and she says, I am going to put this diamond gem I have, I'm gonna put it safely in this two dimensional safe because I'm gonna check. I'm gonna look from the top. I'm gonna look from the sides. I'm gonna look from the bottom. I'm gonna look from the, the back. And I'm going to put my little diamond, It's a, actually it's called a ruby, it's going to be a ruby. I put this extremely expensive ruby into this perfectly safe safe. I've got my little ruby in here and it's going to be safe. I'm putting it in here. No one can get to it. Only I can get into it because only I can enter inside of my 2D box when I open the side because it's two dimensions, right? You know what I mean by two dimensions. That's on a piece of paper. It's a flat piece of paper. And all she can see is, nope, there's a line right there, a line there, and there. There's no way to get into the box in two dimensions. You see it? Ah, somebody's talking about the fourth dimension. Ooh, the fourth dimension is a very dangerous place because that's uh, that's where, that, there's a theory that that is where God lives and he can access all things because we're in a three dimensional space. But imagine you're just a 2D person Okay. Happy go lucky. This is ICT. All you little 2D players, because you're like, oh, this way is time. And this way is price. Oh, it's time and price. Time and price. I'm going to put my diamond here. Be safe. Yep. And then there's us playing from the 3D, three dimensional space. And we're coming in here, going to wreck your world. Why? Because I can just reach right in from this side. And I can reach right inside and grab your little diamond and pull it out this way. And I've stolen your diamond, but you think that you are safe in the 2D space because you didn't know there was a third dimension. 3D. Well, that's what you're doing when you're playing with ICT. It's retarded. Any of these guys who are saying, time and price, time and price, and they don't take into account the Z-axis, which is volume, quantity, on the tape, you're missing out. That's why our system takes care of all of them. Yes, you need time and price. Yes, you need structure, but you also need the Z-axis, which is depth. And that also includes speed. That, in my opinion, is the fourth dimension. How fast, how quick. Because you can move, depending on how fast you move through something, like light. Can light pass through things? Some things that are translucent, it can. And if you travel at the proper speed, you can go through anything. Oh, it's getting deep. Are we fourth dimension? I don't know. Are we fifth dimension because you can hear it? You're using audio cues? I don't know. Can you smell it? Yeah, we're not there yet. We ain't, we ain't having farts like uh, if you're uh, 
You got, it would be cool if we had um, some kind of fart sprayer, like when the markets are bad. Uh, or maybe it smells like some of ICT's colognes. Really stinky. <laughs> um, there we go. Two at a time. It's reminding you of that book. What book is that? Atomic Habits. Oh, yeah, this comes to a question. Somebody said, suggestions for replacing habits. One of my phrases, if you have bad habits and you want to stop that bad habit, you cannot erase you must replace write that down if you were talking about your habits you cannot just erase a habit you must replace it so write this down for when it comes to habits you cannot erase you must replace so his question was suggestions for replacing habits well each different type of bad habit might have a different replacement for it so it's hard for me to cover all but if i'm giving things like in our trading one of the biggest things about um, being able to get a good habit boils down to one thing. One thing. If you're gonna write down a word tonight that's gonna stick with you tonight, this is the one. I'm gonna do it in all caps. Repetition. That's one word. However, what I want you to think about though when you are doing your mark replay is proper repetition and i'm gonna say repetitions and no there's no parentheses around this it is repetitions plural because i have said this in one of our most recent live streams as well but i'm gonna hit it here one more time here tonight because it is that important in the same way that people will say often they'll say practice makes perfect no let's replace that one here tonight with Practice makes permanent. Perfect. All right. If you want to do bad things like ICT, here's why ICT students, I feel bad for them, get wrecked. Because they're practicing bullshit. So what does that produce? Stinky in, stinky out. Um, you don't want that. Practice does not make per perfect. It makes permanent. So if you're putting in crap from ICT, you are going to be crap. Fact, okay, so let's focus on, what's the solution? Everybody should probably know this one, probably all heard this one, uh, y'all y'all, all smart folks, smart folks. Perfect practice. Right, in the same way that crappy practice makes crappy, right? Perfect practice makes perfect. Cool, now, do we have to be perfect? No! We don't, because remember this phrase, with us in Algobox. You do not have to be perfect to be profitable. While and then, if anybody is telling that you have to be, like ICT, he's also, again, those people are a fraud. If they're like, oh, it's gotta be perfect, that's why you're, that's why you're failing, because you're not perfect yet. You're not perfect like me, because you don't do my habits. You don't have my habits, because I'm perfect, and you aren't perfect, so you, that's why you're failing, not because of my strategies, because you didn't learn my perfect, no. No. You don't have to be perfect to be profitable, okay? We, we miss trades a lot. We will misfire. In fact, we had uh, some jokes, you know, even recently about uh, one of our own members being like, oh, I miss, misclicked on the button, but was able to come back. He does not, you don't have to be perfect to be profitable. Did not ruin his entire profitability for the day just because he was not perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be profitable, but this depends on the size of your PL. Here is a big one for you. There is a direct correlation It's a big one. There is a direct correlation between the amount of time you spend in market replay, those who don't know what market replay is, MR, this is market replay, and the size of your PL. Okay, this is not necessarily profitability. Okay, uh, again, you don't have to be perfect to be profitable, but if you want to be the guy who is the top guy on the server in the gaming, um, the guy who has probably spent more time in the game is going to be better, etc. So I do encourage you on a regular basis, I tell you to spend the time in the market replay, but what happens if you're spending time in market replay and you're not doing it right? Is that gonna help you? No, 
So now I'm gonna give you the solution to how you should be doing market replay. Are you ready? Now, some people have already seen this. It's okay, I'm gonna re-hit it again because it is that important and I hope that somebody catches it this time. In market replay, you guys know we trade five trades. So oftentimes people go one, two, three, four, five trades, and then they'll go on to next. And then they'll do one, two, three, four, five again. One, two, three, four, five. I'll do the next one, the next one. But I'm like, hey, well, what was your trade number one? They're like, um, I don't remember. Let me go back and look. Oh, that's upsetting. I'm sorry. That's not how you should be practicing. Here it is. Here's the magic. Are you ready? Change it tonight. If you have not been doing this, don't beat yourself up about it. But here is the new hotness. This is what you're going to do from now on if you want to be the bomb.com. One, 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 comma, two, oops, two, 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 comma, three, 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 four, 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 comma, five, 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 five. You get me? So you're doing this five sets thing. Okay, now that you just did this play five times, guess what happens? I'll tell you exactly what happens. You get good at this play. You get good. Do you want to get good? Do you want to increase your PNL? Do you want a ginormous PNL? You want people looking at you like, holy shnikes. You see the guy, you see the size of that guy's PNL? Yes, yes, you do. You want that. So, how do you do it? You want to get good, then do it five times. Go to the next one, do this one. Five times that play. Look, you might think, oh, I already did that one. No, nope. <laughs> do it again. Beat yourself up to become good at that play so that it becomes a habit. Somebody asked, come full swing back. You're like, oh, Vinny's going off on this. Nope. I answered the question. The question came down to how do you replace the habit? A habit is something you just do naturally without thinking about it, isn't it? Now, you might think about it on occasion, but I am telling you that this is how you replace and fix a bad habit with a new good habit. You become, I don't wanna say God tier, cause listen, I have a lot of respect for the good Lord. I don't like to say it, but you know what I'm saying? In gaming, they'll say, oh, God mode, okay? Ultimate tier level in this game, Again, it is not going to mean, oh, well, you'll be profitable or not. You could probably be profitable, right? But you might be the guy making a few hundred dollars versus the guy who you're like, you know, um, thousands, right? And your average is averaging thousands a day or averaging hundreds a day. Difference is this habit right here. And if you repeat now, does it mean you only have to do five? No. In fact, if you do more than this, even more powerful do it 10 times where that trade if it ever shows up think about this if you do something five ten times if it shows up in a live market what do you think happens to your brain your brain goes right back to it's like pattern recognition it is we are very good as at humans uh, or as humans at recognizing faces we may not remember a name right your guys like oh i can't remember that rule what was that rule Vinny? but i tell you what if you saw a pattern multiple times you will remember you saw that now, oftentimes you're like, oh, I've seen this before, but I don't remember. How many of you guys had this? Uh, you know, really need to do a little raise your hand. See if you can find an icon of raise your hand if this is you. How many times have you been like, oh, I've seen this pattern before, but I don't know what comes next. If you have that feeling more often than not, that sucks, number one. Number two, though, if you can't remember what comes next, it's because you have not done enough of this. You follow me on this? Okay. You want to have done enough of this that you're like, ah, I know what's going to happen right here. Oh, I've got this recorded in my brain. I know what comes next. So your confidence increases, your size of your trade increases, your confidence increases. And if your confidence increases, you can push the size that you want to push. You can define your own way. You can define your own risk and profitability. I don't want to say profitability because that's like a on off. You can define your own level of success. You could trade that with three contracts or you could go four or five. You could, eh, you know, well, I'm just a toe in the water guy because I'm not really sure. But if you're like, dude, I know what's coming next. You know what you're going to do? You're going to go big, aren't you? You feeling me? I'm feeling it. This is it. That's, that's a secret. 
right there. Just answer the, the secret right there. Great question there from Don. Beautiful stuff. Let's go to the next one. How do you go about marking ACDC zones and how do you play the Enigma after one? That is, man, that is a deep, deep question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a pause right here on this. We have been at this for an hour here tonight. Thanks for hanging out with me. We're a few minutes over that, actually we're at an hour and 20. So I'm gonna cut this one right here. This is a two hour deal. Um, I think that's what it was. Is that a hundred and, yeah, no, one hour, 20 minutes. Coming up at two hours. I'm gonna do more of these for you guys. I'm gonna start with this question next on, again, I may do another one this week or it might be in the next Mentorship Monday. Come back for that. These are great questions here. I am gonna mark out because this is a lot right here. He's asking the deep question, how do you go about marking out the ACDC zones? How do you play the Enigma after one? Wow, that's a big one. I'm already here at two hours, so I'm gonna let you guys get to other things here this evening. We'll pick up right here in the next one, so don't miss it. Make sure you are subscribed, hit that like button, share it out with your friends, save somebody. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, F-U-I-C-T. Let's send out that big H-Town. See ya.